Balling out of the yards for the main line. Thousands of tons of concentrated locomotive pulling power, moving merchandise, food, and raw materials to destinations in half the states in the Union. She's heading for the East Coast. She's bound for Point South. She's pulling for the mountains on her way to the shores of the Pacific. She's rolling toward the plains of the Great Southwest. Countless cities, towns, and country places wait for the freight she is hauling. And she'll get it there. She's been getting it there for more than a hundred years, since the day in 1830 when the tiny locomotive, Best Friend, began hauling cotton from the plantations around Charleston, South Carolina. She's getting it there today, over thousands of miles of track, hauling the material to feed and clothe and build a nation. Yes, the freight will reach its destination all right, because a great team of railroad men are working together day and night to make sure the freight will go through on schedule. Men like these, men like you, you are the engineers and firemen, the yard conductors, the field men and tin men. You are the men in the retarder towers, the men who handle the classification controls on the crest of the hump, aided by the advanced train consists, by teletype which speed up the operation. You are the yard men of the nation's railroads, the master magicians who can pick up a yard full of cars like a deck of cards and deal them out onto the right tracks in the right order, in the right combination at just the right time. You have as much to say about that farm machinery reaching the farmer as the men who made it. This man with his knowledge of engineering designed it. This man with his knowledge of tools put it together. And you with your knowledge of switching, put it in the right place, in the right train, to reach its destination in the fastest time in perfect condition. You're proud of that skill of yours, and why shouldn't you be? Look at the things you have to know, the things you must be qualified to do. Here is a car going into a classification track. How fast is it moving? Four miles an hour? Five? Six? Hard to tell for the average man, but you know. How fast must a car be moving when it leaves the cut to cover a certain number of feet and be going at a safe speed when it couples to the other cars on the track? Hard to tell offhand for the average man, but you know. Here is a car that's just off the road. It's warm. Will it travel faster than this one, which has been standing in the yard? How much do you allow for this slight downgrade? How much faster or slower will this heavy car travel than an empty? How should this engineer start this cut to avoid the damaging effects of slack action? No, the answers are not simple. But you know them, as five million tons of safely delivered freight every day will testify. And all that explains why you don't like to hear things like this. The nation's railroads are paying freight loss and damage claims running into many millions of dollars a year. You don't like to see things like this. Or like this. Because you know what it means. It means damage to the freight itself. Costly damage in many cases. Damage which may run into hundreds of dollars per car. Damage that has to be paid for by the railroad to the tune of many millions of dollars a year. Paid for by the railroad whose job it is to deliver the freight in perfect condition, not destroy it. Whose job it is to spend its money improving its service in the face of stiffening competition and give all of us a more secure future. Yes, even though damage is the exception, even though so much freight is switched carefully. You don't like to hear about these things or see them because they reflect on your skill and experience. They reflect on the company you serve. Damage caused by rough handling doesn't always stop with the freight itself. Rough handling means damage to equipment, 
car body strained and broken. The service life of the car shortened. Journal waste grabs are often caused by overspeed impacts, which result in a condition that may become painfully evident later out on the road when the train has to be stopped for a hot box. If caught in time, it may be serviced or the car may have to be set out on the siding. Who pays for the delay? The railroad. The railroad that depends for its business on customer goodwill, on its ability to get the freight through on time and safely. The railroad that every day faces stiffer and stiffer competition from other forms of transportation that are doing their best to provide better service than the railroad and thus make your job less and less secure. There are few businesses where so much depends on everybody doing his level best as it does in railroading. Only when all its men work together can the road succeed and prosper. And only when your road prospers will you prosper and be able to enjoy the security you want for yourselves and your families. Of course, we all know that much of our freight loss and damage is the result of improper packaging and loading. And yet we cannot place all the blame here. For shippers the country over are spending large sums of money each year experimenting to find better ways to package their products, better ways to keep their shipments secure. We know that still other factors are responsible for much of our loss and damage. Careful investigations have shown that the principal cause is severe shock resulting from rough switching. No, you don't like to hear these things because your railroad men skilled in your particular job. And you don't have to hear these things, because these things don't have to happen. This is no problem beyond the range of your knowledge. Here are the things you know. Here are your weapons against damage caused by rough handling. To begin with, you know your yard layout. You know the track condition. Do the lead tracks have the same grade all the way? Are there any sags or other conditions that slow cars down or speed them up? You know the work to be done. If you are alert and pay close attention at all times while movements are being made, you will always keep well out of reach of trouble. You know the importance of coupling cars at speeds no greater than four miles per hour, no faster than a brisk walk. Experience with impact recorders shows that coupling speeds over four miles per hour spell danger and possible damage to both freight and car. There doesn't seem to be too much difference between four miles per hour and, say, six, does it? But from your experience, you know that the destructive force of impact is many times greater than the proportionate increase in coupling speed. This chart shows how the destructive force of the impact increases as coupling speeds increase. If one car strikes another at one mile an hour, the impact equals one unit of smash power. At two miles an hour, however, the effect of the impact is not two units of smash power, as many might suppose, but two times two, or four units. At five miles an hour, the effect is not five times as great, but five times five, or 25 times as great. The destructive effect of a car suddenly stopped while it is moving at six miles per hour would be about equivalent to dropping it ten inches. At ten miles per hour, it would be equivalent to a drop of three feet, four and a half inches. So even a slight increase in coupling speed may spell the difference between safe switching and dangerous switching. Even the best loading methods will not keep the load from shifting and breaking up under overspeed impact. In this slow motion study, notice the shock as it couples to a cut at high speed. You have also seen the effect of overspeed impacts on the equipment itself. How long can even the sturdiest car stand up against handling like this? The draft gear cushions only part of the shock, 
the car and its plating take all the rest of the shock. In this slow motion study, notice the shock waves along the roof of the car as it couples to a cut at high speed. Notice the bulging of the side panels at the same speed. Quite a difference between this and what happens when coupling is done at the safe speed of four miles per hour or less. Overspeed impact causes damage not only to the moving car, but also to the car that is struck. Depending on the nature and value of the lading, the damage might be even greater in the struck car. You know these things, so you do something about them. You couple the cars at no more than four miles an hour, whether you're handling them in flat switching or by means of retarders. This is called a car retarder, but actually it keeps freight moving faster through scores of big railroad yards where incoming cars are switched and made up into trains for many different destinations. You have discovered that cars roll much faster in hot weather than in cold. Experience has shown that when the temperature is high, rough impacts occur more frequently. So you regulate your cutoff speed accordingly. You've noticed that heavy cars roll farther than empties. But you realize that empties should be treated with the same care as loads, for in addition to possible damage to the empty itself, the struck car might contain a load, such as sewer pipe, that can be easily broken. As an engine man, you know other things too, such as the importance of adjusting the slack while pulling or shoving a long cut of car. You try not to make the mistake of opening the throttle suddenly, because you know that with the slack between cars, the jolt of a fast pickup or shove may be all it takes to damage the freight in several cars, in addition to possible damage to the draft gear. There is a limit to the pull a drawbar assembly will stand. As a switchman, you are a key man. You give your signals clearly so that the engine man and others know exactly what you mean. You stand in the open where your signals can be plainly seen, not hidden by posts or other obstructions. You face the engine man or give him your full back so that your arm movements will not be blocked by your body. And you give your signals correctly Proceed. Reduce speed. Stop. Back up. The important thing is to give the proper signal at the proper time and as plainly as a baseball umpire motioning safe. You have found by experience that proper signals give the engine crew ample time to comply and that except in real emergency, you avoid the necessity of giving violent stop signals or washouts which may give the car a damaging jolt. You space the cuts so others in the yard will have time to consult their switch list and get the switches lined up or the retarders properly set. In flat switching, you know that because of less slack action, Small cuts are handled more efficiently than long cuts. Fewer stops, starts, and jolts. Less risk of damage to the freight. You see that switches are properly lined up, so there's no danger of derailment. And you look at the switch point to make sure it's in proper position. You make sure, when classifying, that switches are properly set up for cuts, because you know that when cars go wrong, it means more trimming and rehandling. 
You switch cars so that they will not foul another track and be sideswiped or be cornered by a following cut. Yes, these are the things you know about switching. These are your special skills. And you understand the importance of using them. You know that a shipment may have to pass through many yards before it reaches its destination. You realize that carelessness on the part of any one individual in the great team of railroad men handling this freight could undo the good work of all the men who handled it previously. You realize the importance of safe car handling. You know that without safe handling, speed means nothing. Does the consignee of this damaged freight care one iota that when you banged the cars together, you were trying to save a move? Nothing was saved, certainly not the freight. There was damage to equipment also. Can you excuse yourself to the manufacturer of this damaged freight by telling him that when his car stopped short, you tried to save a move by driving it in? No. He thinks only of his ruined merchandise, his lost sales, his lost profits. Does the shipper of this merchandise go easy on the railroad because the damage was done when you snapped up the slack too fast? No. He would much rather have his shipment than a claim payment. You wouldn't put up your money, would you, for damaged furniture, a refrigerator, or a water heater all smashed up? And yet hundreds of thousands of times each year, damage to the nation's freight forces the railroads to pay out hard-earned money. Money that should be spent, and could be spent, on creating more and more satisfied customers for the road, on making everybody's job more secure, on improving the road's service and equipment so it can better compete with other freight carriers. We must all remember, in a business such as ours, every division, every department, and every job is of key importance. Only as our business prospers will we who are a part of it prosper. Two, the railroad security, our own security, depends directly on how well each of us does his individual job. We have a great reputation to live up to, a reputation that began more than a century ago, a reputation we must help preserve as the last train out of the yards tonight hauls the material that keeps our nation strong. In countless cities, towns, and country places, America waits for the freight, and simply by using skills developed over the years, by exercising care and good judgment, railroad men like you will see that the freight goes through and goes through safely.